Um, okay, I, I will go back and I will try to figure out the furry shit like on the fly. Um, but I did watch this. Um, and I have some hot takes on it. Okay. I think that it was pretty good. Um, it, it sort of, I think that he overused music, uh, quite a bit to try and like provoke like an emotional response. Cause a lot of what Boogie's saying is like retarded. And then he overemphasizes the music to try and provoke like a certain emotion, which is, um, music and documentary should not like force a certain feeling. Uh, at some point he gives up and decides that Boogie, uh, I'll just play that part real quick if I can find it. Let's see, I think it's like 23 minutes. There, yeah, right here. I wanted to make like a document. Halfway through the do documentary production, I decided to take a break. This part I'll play. Sorry, I keep I sniffing to make, with Mike. Like a documentary that was generally entertaining, you realize, wait a second, everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest shit I've ever heard. That would be half of my mortgage right now. $10,000. And it's just about making the best of it. This is the first documentary we're, I'm doing. I can't put out a documentary that's this guy the whole time because I don't want my brand new channel uh, to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people that exist. It's just like, what the fuck happened to this guy? What the fuck happened to Boogie? So that's one of the funny things that I didn't see when I watched the clips of it. Um, the other one is that he didn't really, I, I don't think he knew how to end it, so he kind of talks about um, his girlfriend, uh, who, I'm torn, I can't decide if she is like desperate to be internet famous and is using Boogie to accomplish that or if she's genuinely like mentally handicapped emotionally stunted emotional age of about nine years old and um find something attractive about Boogie I'm kind of torn uh at the end of the video it's it's a very long segment that's like just him getting high on psychedelic mushrooms and acting really pretentious about it and um at the end, he he wakes up from his psychedelic mushroom experience and is like, yeah, actually, like, I have, like, an, an enlightened position about, um, like, the world now. Like, and now I see that none of this matters. Like, mushrooms have given me, like, an elevated and enhanced perspective that I didn't have before in my own life, man. And it's kind of like when... Like when you really, really want to believe that something is true, that you'll try and like lean into it. And I kind of feel like Boogie really hoped that having like a psychedelic experience would like, because the way that some people describe it is that um, hallucinogenic experiences can like kickstart your personality. Like it would be like a complete shutdown and restart and maybe you'll be like a little bit different. Um, that's something that's like a rumor that gets passed around a lot in like psychedelic communities. So I, was, I think he was hoping for that where he'd wake up and like, wow, you know what? I'm not a piece of shit anymore. I'm going to go fix my life. Be right back. And I don't know. The, the ending was kind of hollow because I, I knew that even that was just like a put on. I didn't understand the the emphasis of having like a 10 minute segment dedicated to psychedelics. Um, and the only other thing to say about it is that it's oddly sexualizing of like his girlfriend like the first clip of her her like ass is hanging out of her pants and then she's like naked in the tub with him at one point it's like that's kind of weird it's kind of weird I don't need to see this retarded girl naked thank you but I don't know thank you for watching this clip this is the CAC of Lofa. remember to like and subscribe